Hi. <laughs> Today we're going to Shakespeare House. Where's that? Uh, in Shake Town. I've read Romeo and Juliet, obviously, A Midsummer Night's Dream, Macbeth, Hamlet. Cool. So I'm excited. So it will be a great thing for you. And an education. Yeah. For and, uh, you. Maybe it will uh, motivate me to read some Shakespeare. Yeah, and you can write me a sonnet. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> we'll see about that. It's just ancient rap, you know? True, and I am a rapper, so it should be an easy transition. All right, let's roll. <laughs> Today we are leaving our middle of nowhere Airbnb to head over to the Cotswolds Market Town where William Shakespeare himself was born and buried. Stratford upon Avon. Immediately upon arriving in Stratford, we are welcomed by the big man himself. And after just a short walk into Henley Street, we find the fabled birthplace flawlessly preserved as the British tend to do so exceptionally well. That's his family thing. Does it get it shaped? Spear? Is it? So, it's a spear. Before exploring the actual house, we start off our tour with the influence of Shakespeare on art throughout the ages. There are statues, busts and books, Shakespeare's very own second folio, and of course, where would we be without Shakespeare's Star Wars? Look at gangster Shakespeare. <laughs> He's so gangster. <laughs> Literary genius and gangster. Nice, just like me a little bit. That's more like you though. <laughs> Thanks for that, Ames. Literary genius and freak. Oh, well, at least I'm a literary <laughs> genius. <laughs> the time has come for the main attraction. A journey back to Shakespeare's time to see how his family lived and worked in the late 16th century. Originally three separate houses, William's dad, John Shakespeare, bought all three and knocked down the walls to create a substantial, half-timbered oak house. With replicas and real antique furniture of the time, we get a good sense of what life was like for the Shakespeare family. And it was pretty cool to see that John, a renowned glove maker, was pioneering working from home with his very own in-house workshop. So this is what John was after. He also made other things, he made purses, um, gentlemen wore purses as well, uh, and a whole range of other, of other products. Shakespeare owned an inn. He like operated an inn. Oh yeah? Yeah. And it In this was, building? Yeah, I think it survived for ages. It was oh, like nice. a flourishing business. A man of many talents. Out of the house and right into the souvenir shop, where they have tragically commercialized the living daylight out of our William. Shakespeare Star Wars, Shakespeare cups, Shakespeare bags, Shakespeare pencils, and Shakespeare honey. They even have Shakespeare books. I mean, come on, now it's just getting ridiculous. Back in the hustle and bustle of Henley Street, it's time we explore some of Stratford's other many Shakespearean sites, all while taking in this beautiful little Cotswold town along the way. Here we have the museum next to Shakespeare's new place, where he lived until his death in 1616. Having been destroyed in 1759, the grounds have remained a garden ever since. So we went where he was born. We just saw where he lived after he became a baller <laughs> with a lot of money. He bought the three story building house in the town. Yeah. The most expensive house in the town. Yeah. And now we're going to see his school. So William's glove maker dad actually became the mayor of Stratford, which is why William was able to attend this awesome looking school. The King Edward School uses a schoolroom for teaching every Monday till 11 a.m. Wow, that's still so cool. It's still a functional school and they use the old room still. Pretty cool. Imagine being a kid and getting class in the same school that Shakespeare got class. It's a lot of pressure. That's you pretty can't crazy. fail English. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Every time you do bad at a test in English, your teacher would just be like, 
Shakespeare would be ashamed of you. On our way to Shakespeare's burial site, we passed this beautiful timbered house, which was owned by Shakespeare's very own daughter, Susanna Hall. We finally arrived at the oldest building in Stratford, the beautiful Holy Trinity Church. Shakespeare was baptized here, he married Anne Hathaway here, and it's also his final resting place. Beautifully preserved, we get the chance to see what Shakespeare would have seen during his many weekly visits to Holy Trinity. Amazingly, the church is still in possession of William's 400 plus years old original baptismal and burial records. In 1616, Shakespeare was buried just below the altar in the chancel, surrounded by carvings, art, and stained glass that tell epic tales of angels, mythical beasts, and man. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of our epic Shakespeare tour. Well worth it. I mean, it's so cool that of somebody that lived so long ago, his own home is so well maintained. You can literally walk on the same floor that he walked on hasn't even been changed. Yeah. The church is amazing as well. Overall, just really cool. Yeah. And pretty impressive. This town is beautiful. Yeah. Like with the river and, and all the old buildings. And you're there. <laughs> That's my favorite part. So throughout this whole day, Kel has been writing a sonnet for me. Yeah. Roses are red, violets are blue. I am William Kelspare. <laughs>